Welcome to Rich Planet TV, October 2013 broadcast. I'm Richard D. Hall. After a six week break from programme making, I thought it was time to produce a new show giving an update on circumstances and reports on a few things I've been looking into. Firstly, apologies to all those who have bought tickets to the October 2013 speaking events, which I have postponed due to a back problem. I can assure you that just sitting up in this position is no fun at all. The talks will go ahead later than planned, probably February next year, earlier if I can manage it. If you have already bought tickets, you can email this address and request to have the ticket reissued or refunded. For the immediate time being, due to commitments and other restrictions, I've decided to produce a monthly Rich Planet TV show, which will be available to view online at richplanet.net from the first of each month. So the next Rich Planet TV show after this one will be available from the 1st of November, then monthly after that until further notice. These shows will be the usual length of around 54 minutes. So just to repeat, Rich Planet TV is now monthly until further notice, available to watch online, new shows coming out on the first of each month. As many of you will know, Rich Planet TV lost its contract with Information TV and is no longer broadcasting weekly shows on Sky and Freesat satellite television platforms. If you want a full explanation for this and the reasons why, please watch the video link below. In summary, a previous Rich Planet show covering the death of soldier Lee Rigby in Woolwich, broadcast back in June, suggested that mainstream media failed to see through this contrived event. A single viewer decided to complain to Ofcom about our valid observations. Incidentally, if you doubt that this event was a contrived event, I suggest you set aside some time and read this web page before coming to an ill-informed opinion based on mainstream media lies. After the complaint to Ofcom, Ofcom decided to launch an investigation into the show which caused Showcase TV to drop Rich Planet like a hot potato. To be fair to Showcase TV, there are a few things viewers may not be aware of. I know that viewers are wondering why other programs on Showcase Channel mysteriously disappeared shortly after Rich Planet was booted off, namely The Corbett Report, UK Column and Paradigm Shift TV. Now these three programs are all packaged by Paradigm Shift TV, who we believe have also had their contract terminated by Information TV, hence all three shows went off air at the same time. Now we need to bear in mind here that Information TV are not a huge business and like any business only survive if they make enough money to pay their employees and expenses. What I'm going to say here uh, may not be perfectly correct but it is my understanding of what happened. At some point uh, previous to the Ofcom investigation launched into the Rich Planet show, Paradigm Shift also had an investigation into one of its films. This film was called Cancer The Hidden Cures. When Ofcom carried out its investigation to determine if it broke any of its guidelines, Information TV were keen to defend the program Cancer the Hidden Cures and took the stance that the program did not breach any Ofcom guidelines. In other words, Information TV was sticking up for paradigm shift for airing the film. I believe that during the investigation or pertaining to it in some way, Ofcom threatened Information TV with quite a large fine. I won't quote the sum, but it was a large sum of money. Now, I'm not sure what the outcome of, of the investigation was, but in the end, I believe Ofcom did not impose any fine. It's my further understanding that since that threat of a fairly large fine by Ofcom, Information TV have perhaps understandably acted in a way to protect their financial interests when faced with another Ofcom investigation, hence the dropping of controversial shows. If this is indeed what happened, Ofcom didn't really have to flex its muscles much to get rid of all of the truth-seeking investigative news and current affairs programs on the entire channel. At the time of recording this show, Ofcom still have not made any decision on the Rich Planet Lee Rigby coverage. 
If you want to keep an eye on Ofcom's investigation reports for future rulings, please make a note of this link. Now this brings me on to the question people keep asking, which is, is Rich Planet TV coming back to television? Before I answer that question, I just want to point out a few things about broadcast TV. When you watch telly, you watch it on what is termed a platform. The platform is the technology being used to send the program to your telly. For example, a DVD player might be considered a platform. In the UK, we have several different platforms broadcasting TV shows. Firstly, we have the terrestrial TV platform. This is where TV shows are sent via radio waves from big antennas on tops of hills and received by TV aerials, usually into a free view box. This platform provides around 50 TV channels. Secondly, we have satellite TV platforms. This is where programs are beamed from a satellite orbiting the Earth and received with a satellite dish, usually bolted to the side of your house. There is more than one satellite platform, the Sky platform being one and FreeSat is another. The platforms use different types of set-top boxes but can utilise the same type of dish. The Sky platform provides several hundred TV channels and the FreeSat platform 150 channels. Rich Planet TV was broadcast on the Sky platform and on the FreeSat platform. It was not broadcast on terrestrial TV. Thirdly, we have cable platforms in the UK. This is where programs are sent along fibre optic cables buried in the ground and into your house via a physical cable. Cable platforms include Virgin Media with 165 channels and also BT Vision with 50 channels. Obviously these different platforms carry a lot of the same TV channels and programs. For example, they all carry BBC One and BBC Two, unfortunately. And none of them now carry Rich Planet TV. Now these platforms are what I would call non-internet platforms, that is, the TV shows are not being sent via the internet. They are being sent over platforms which, unlike the internet, have a limited number of channels. So let's now consider the internet, which is itself a platform. The internet has hundreds of millions of websites, which one could consider as channels, one of which is richplanet.net. What I'm trying to do here is illustrate the importance of the non-internet based platforms. If you want to get your TV show watched by lots of people, it's important to get onto one or preferably all of the non-internet platforms. This is because the viewers to channel ratio is very high. Just a few hundred channels, but millions of viewers. Whereas the internet has hundreds of millions of channels with hundreds of millions of viewers. If you start a TV channel on the internet where you're competing with hundreds of millions of other channels, how are you going to get a good share of the viewers? The internet is an important platform because it gives every person in the world the opportunity to broadcast their message. But if you want to get your message heard by a large number of people, the non-internet platforms are by far still the best way to reach a mass audience. Obviously there are different costs, rules and regulations in getting your channel or show onto one of the non-internet TV platforms, but I can assure you it isn't easy and it isn't cheap. The media moguls have it all sewn up. They make it impossible for truly independent program makers to get into their much viewed but limited channel platforms. We now come on to something which people keep emailing me about, telling me it could be the answer to all of my broadcasting problems. David Icke's proposed TV channel, The People's Voice. Let's just say first off that David Icke, in my opinion, is one of the best geopolitical researchers and commentators on the planet, and this is his talent. I have watched and listened to the promotion of The People's Voice with some confusion. At no point have I read or heard any clear statement as to what platform this new TV channel will be on. This is of utmost importance, as I have just explained. As far as I can gather, and please somebody correct me if I'm wrong, the People's Voice is intended to be a web-based venture. Somebody told me that it has ambition to get onto a real TV platform eventually, which is great, but that's like my mate who owns a computer shop in concert having ambitions to become PC World. It probably ain't going to happen. People keep telling me to give my shows to the People's Voice, which I find strange. 
If the People's Voice like the programmes made by Rich Planet TV, then they can advertise my TV web station on their TV web station, and I will do the same for them. It's a win-win. We have two independent media websites to choose from, giving more choice and a higher level of independence. Is the penny starting to drop? Unless the venture is on a platform other than just the internet, then there is no benefit in me being on it, because I'm already on the internet. The real problem is that the other platforms are very tightly controlled by Ofcom as well as by other financial constraints. Rant over. I find it disconcerting, firstly, that the people's voice have been vague about what platform they intend to use, and secondly, the people keep trying to get me to put my programs on it. Is somebody trying to create a containment area on the internet in which to attract all the alternative thinkers and independent media shows, put them into one tiny pot, label the pot with the word nutters and then ignore them? Within our new tiny pot we could then claim that we are all changing the world, unbeknown to the 99% of TV addicted masses who are still watching Dancing on Shite on mainstream TV. The ratio of channel to viewers on TV platforms is a key consideration in the information war, which the likes of terrorist protector Rupert Murdoch understands, and why he still has control of 99% of people's minds. We need to be honest with ourselves and state the solution to the information war, the tackling of mainstream media and the criminals controlling it is yet to be found and setting up a TV website really is like pissing in the wind. And I don't claim that I'm not pissing in the wind, but at least I'm trying to think rationally about which way to aim my piss. Staying on the subject of TV platforms and licenses, the majority of people in the UK watch TV via a free view box receiving TV signals, as I said, from big transmitters on tops of hills. Several years ago you may remember that regional ITV programs in the UK were more or less phased out. On the new digital freeview system, channel number 8 has been reserved for the re-emergence of local independently produced television, television specific to certain regions of the UK. This is now being rolled out in certain areas with private companies competing for licenses to run the regional channels being awarded by Ofcom. Some companies have already been awarded licenses to produce and broadcast a full program of local television. 19 licenses were awarded earlier this year with some channels starting the new local TV broadcasting at the end of 2013. A further 23 licenses will be advertised for application over next year. How the hell these companies will actually make any money is a mystery, with the tiny amount of advertising revenue they would obtain from Maureen's Hair Salon or Kevin the Carpet Fitter. My region, Tynan Weir, has already had its license approved to a TV company called Made Television, who are based, you guessed it, in London. The TV channel is to be called Made in Tynan Weir and will feature a blend of local news and entertainment including sports and film reviews. Station manager Tony Hazel said, We're thrilled to be awarded this license after many years of hard work by the team. Tynan Weir is already a creative capital with some fantastic TV companies based here and a strong history of production. Made in Tynan Weir will be different though, as we'll be focusing on local programming by and for local viewers. Mm. Now, about 18 months ago, I went along to an official meeting organised by Newcastle uh, Central MP Shi Onrua which was open to the public where the opportunity to operate this channel was being discussed. Only about 20 to 30 people turned up as the event was very poorly advertised. She Onrua, who chaired the meeting, just so happens to be an ex-Ofcom employee and seems to be buddies with certain Sky producers. During this meeting people were having their say as to what the new channel should be like. I happen to have a cheap camcorder with me and I recorded bits of the proceedings. Here's MP Shi Onrua addressing the meeting. What we have today is a proposal for, from Ofcom uh, for 20 licenses in different cities across the country. And one of those cities is Newcastle. Though to be more accurate, it's actually more central time side, which is where the coverage of the um, spectrum that they're offering for these TV channels will cover. So it will be, lo be local to central time side. It's Newcastle Gate Center and a little bit of the area around that. 
And it's quite, you know, we're, in some ways we're lucky to be one of these 20. For example, Durham is not going to get a local TV station, but Newcastle Gates said will. Um, so then the question arises, what do we in Newcastle want from that television station? At that particular point, we produced over 10 hours a week of local programming and 50 hours a year of network programs for the ITV network. The program budget then was about 13 million pounds. Now, towards the beginning of the meeting, a young cameraman walked into the room and set up a TV camera to film the discussion. I didn't record the part where she, Onrua, actually introduces the young journalist to the meeting, where she said, he is working for Sky TV, does anyone mind if he films the meeting? But his piece was not being recorded for Sky TV on the telly. The young man was working for a brand new online Sky project, a website showing northeast news videos called Sky Tyne and Weir. Um, interestingly, uh, James has said it's the Sky um, Time and Rear, a web based local TV station which is already um, online. It just made me think in, in terms of what Abney said, in terms of depressing content, um, that's a big thing for us to try and avoid where possible because obviously, online, you, you go online, um, if you were to look at videos or articles online, your attention span is shortened for a start because you'll happily click away onto something else. So the stories that we try to do tend to be quirky, um, funny if possible, but also that when we have to do depressing stories, um, we try and just do them straight and just tell you the need to know facts rather than go over the top. So the, the PC round band thing was a, a major deal for people um, all over the country, which obviously we did cover, but we, we tried to do it in a way that wasn't too depressing and in, in a way you could just see it for what it is and then maybe go on to something else. Um, so is your remix keeping the region happy? That's the part, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How do you get your funding? How do you make your money? I mean, who pays your money? They don't. They don't. We don't. It's, it, there's no advertising on the site. Um, it's funded by Sky. It's, it's a Sky project, but it's uh -huh. not coming from um, uh, a, a news budget as such, it's coming from the corporate budget. So at the moment, obviously, and what Sky is primarily concerned about is, is the brand and getting themselves recognised on a local level with Tyne and Weir. Um, so, so the more we can do that. Obviously. You don't sound like you're from up here. Uh, you said the channel's only been going a few weeks. Yes. Where, where are you from? Uh, I'm, I'm originally from Lancaster in the northwest. But so do you, did you come up here specifically to work on this uh, channel? I, I was actually in the region anyway in my former job. Um, okay. So I, I what about the other ten journalists? Um, uh, they are still from the region. Right. Okay. Anyway, um, previous organisations such as the BBC, Newcastle, and the Titans. So it's, uh, the truth is funded by Rupert Murdoch then. Yes. Why is it? 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 Um, from what I've been told, um, since working for the organisation, um, Time and Weir has a fantastic passion for uh, local events. Football, Newcastle, Sunderland, it's obviously a, a very big talking point up here. Uh, and there's often quite interesting, informative news stories. Um, and they pick this region for that reason, I guess. Well, I have worked for Murdoch for several years, and uh, I just think what an alternative motive that's all. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. so we're not here to discuss why. why yeah. um, no, it's, it's just, it's just it's it's interesting to see where yeah, funding is coming from. Yeah. Um, I think it's very interesting that the sky chose um, Tyne and Weir for their first. Is, is it, sorry, can I just ask one more question to young man? Is it just Tyne and Weir, or are they in other regions as well? No, it's just Tyne and Weir. So, so they chose Tyne and Weir for their first and only so far pilot. And uh, when, I, when I spoke to the, the news director, um, she said uh, one of the, the as uh, James said, the reason was um, the local support for local um, things, whether that be football or, or uh, sports or local
about what we want to do from the television. Does anybody have a point to make on that? I found out that Rupert Murdoch had set up this internet website and was funding 11 journalists to run it with no real visible return on the investment. There is no charge for viewers to watch this website. I also remember huge advertising campaigns on billboards in and around Newcastle for this new Sky Tynan Weir website. So what is the motive for Rupert Murdoch to start Sky Tynan Weir and how come he started the website at the same time Tyne and Weir local TV license was being bidded for? The people who spoke at this meeting seemed so out of touch with the modern day media world, my cynical mind at the time thought that possibly the channel was being set up deliberately to fail and that Sky Tyne and Weir had been set up in parallel so that it could take over the local terrestrial channel when it went bust. Rupert Murdoch wouldn't do anything like that, would he? As I said, the website employs 11 journalists full-time who, let's assume, earn £30,000 a year. That's a cool third of a million pound a year to run. So it may have cost Rupert Murdoch perhaps a million pounds so far with no visible return on his investment. Isn't that strange? And this website is nowhere near the complexity of the 24-hour news and current affairs TV website The People's Voice is trying to create. Sky Tyne and Weir is merely a collection of short video pieces which play on demand. People like Rupert Murdoch can and do throw millions of pounds into ventures for strategic purposes, not necessarily in all cases to make instant money, but spent strategically for some hidden reason that becomes evident in the future, thus keeping more control of the media within his news organisations. £300,000 allegedly raised by David Icke wouldn't buy the biscuits at Sky TV, never mind set up a 24-hour news channel. Another TV platform which interests me is the Roku system. It is technically internet-based because it streams programs via your internet connection, but uses an additional set-top box which connects between your internet router and your television. It provides 450 TV channels for the one-off cost of the box and is up and running worldwide with over 5 million viewers and growing. Rich Planet TV have been approached by a private Roku channel called the Anomalies Channel and I will most likely be broadcasting Rich Planet TV shows on the Anomalies Channel. This makes sense because Roku channels cannot be used on the internet alone. It requires a Roku box. Therefore, this expands the presence of Rich Planet TV to another platform. Now I still am looking for a channel on a non-internet based platform that's prepared to broadcast this show uh, so we can get back on proper television. And of course I would warmly welcome the opportunity to get back on Showcase TV should they consider uh, re-awarding my contract. Any future developments will be posted on the website. Join us after the break.